Hey, welcome to the channel. Uh, today, what we got here is a Williamson uh, Tempomatic oil-fired furnace, and I'm going to be cleaning it. I haven't seen this in, in a couple of years, this furnace, but uh, they've, they, they're usually not around in the wintertime, uh, but they do leave it running. And I know there was some kind of an issue with it uh, when they got back. It wouldn't start, but the homeowner worked on it himself. Uh, he got it working and then told me I didn't have to stop. So, um, you know, we're going to go investigate a little bit here as, as I do the cleaning and, and uh, see what, what it is. So, as you can see, I took the uh, covers off, um, taking the smoke pipe off, uh, you know, because this furnace here doesn't have any cleanouts in the uh, in the front of it you have to take the pipe off you have to pull the uh, flue collector off and then you have to go in with a snorkel uh, attachment to the um, to the vacuum and you know kind of brush it around and and uh, do it do it that way so here i'm taking the screws out of the flue collector and and i found inside for whatever reason the cover to the fan and limit switch uh, it was all burnt, and so it's been in there a while. How it got in there or whatever, I have no idea. Uh, so somebody has, you know, has been into this uh, furnace. So that flu collector um, is one that I've changed uh, that kind of rotted out on the old one. I was able to get that uh, new flu collector. Uh, I think it cost me 70 or $80, something like that. Uh, so I, I put it on there. <clears throat> those aren't any available anymore. That type of Williamson furnace is not made anymore. So, um, you know, that was kind of new old stock that the company that I do business with that sells Williamson, uh, they did have, have one on the shelf. So I put it on. It was, like I say, it was $80. Um, just this past uh, fall, I had a customer that needed a flu collector so I called them to see if they had any, and they had one left. Uh, and like I say, they're not made. I was going to go to a machine shop and have the thing made, but they had one left. I probably should have, or I'm sorry, a sheet metal shop, not a machine shop, but to have, to have it made. <clears throat> and I probably should have gone because they sent it to me along with a bill, $286 for that sheet metal flu collector. I thought it was crazy, but it was the last one I had it. I put it on for the customer, and, and they were good. So I'm taking the light over there. I'm going to check in the chimney to see if the uh, you know there's any obstructions or if that's got to be cleaned out, um, and it was good. So then I, I just take the brush. I go in and, and brush it out, and, uh, you know, I have this snorkel attachment. It goes on the end of the vacuum, and then you can, you can run that in all the way around both ways and uh, make sure it's, uh, it's cleaned out really good. So uh, what I've got to do as well is uh, the customer had said that, uh, you know, it, wasn't, it didn't start or something. He had to push the reset button. You know, so the first thing I usually check when I hear that is, is an ignition transformer. Um, and uh, later on here in the video, uh, I do check it, and it does need to be replaced. But uh, in the meantime, I believe I'm putting the flu collector back on. You know, because I've got it all vacuumed out and brushed out, and uh, so then we can we can get on with the uh, with the rest of it. The Williamson furnace, um, I like the the new Williamson Centennial Series furnace. Uh, I think it's a really great furnace. Um, they have clean out on them. Uh, they're not that stamped sheet metal like you find in a lot of the furnaces. The Williamson has, it's almost like a two-inch black pipe, steel pipe that's welded to the heat exchanger. So they're, they're, they're pretty stout. They don't rot out like like the the ones on the cheaper furnaces do and uh but yeah uh it is the ignition transformer was weak 
Um, it was the old iron core type, I believe. And uh, so I'm going to, you know, I'm going to change that out. And, uh, you know, I usually take the electrodes out. I clean them. I change the nozzle, you know, re reset the electrodes and, and go from there. got to change the oil filter, um, which I always include with a cleaning. That is a fairly new tank, and, the, you know, it's not that old. It's in good shape. That's a little smaller tank. I think that's a 230-gallon because a, a regular 275 wouldn't fit down the stairs. Uh, and just so that it's clear, this isn't uh, an educational video. It's not meant to be a tutorial. It's just showing you what I do and how I do it and maybe an explanation of why I do things the way I do. If you're ever going to do something like this, uh, you know, always consult the manual or a professional or, or hire, you know, hire a professional to come in. So there's my trusty old uh, camping pan that I had for 28 years, 27 years, whatever it is. And uh, I'm going to do the filter. One thing uh, you want to be real careful of with these with these oil filters, and I've I've had it happen to me, um, is <clears throat> when you when you pull it off, you wanna you wanna take the old gasket out. Make sure you take the rubber gasket off, because uh, if you don't and you you don't catch it, uh, and you put the other new rubber gasket on and you double those rubber gaskets up, the big the big round rubber gaskets, uh, you a good chance you're gonna have a leak. in the filter here I started to say you don't want to get the double gasket on there so that uh, it doesn't leak and anyway um, <clears throat> sometimes too with these they're, they're a sheet metal can and there's a steel bolt and again this isn't an ed ed educational thing it's just uh, what I do I think over time tightening it and loosening it the can tends to uh, bend in a little bit it tends to give and I think the bolt can stretch so what I have done in the past uh, is sometimes the little gasket that goes under the head of the bolt, sometimes I've doubled those up so the bolt doesn't bottom out in the, in the uh, nut part of it, that, in the bottom of the filter can. So I've had to do that uh, as well. I've had filters leak, uh, and it's a mess. It creates a mess. So... Um, and this, this filter here, in this case, wasn't that bad. Um, so we'll get this changed and, uh, and get on with the cleaning. So, you know, if you've, uh, hopefully you'll stick around to the end. I'm going to kind of kick it back to the uh, original soundtrack, which really isn't a whole lot uh, other than a lot of noise in that. But um, if you like the video, you know, hit the hit the subscribe and the thumbs up. Hit the like button. Uh, that'll that goes a long way. And uh, leave your comments if you got got any comments. Uh, uh, by all means. Um, all right. So in, enjoy the video. I uh, did want to add that uh, when I bleed the filters, I don't use a little bleeder screw very seldom. Usually I just uh, uh, open the valve, I back the nut off a little bit, and I let the air come out around the, the rubber gasket part. And then when uh, you don't know, have to open it very far uh, because the fuel can squirt out of there pretty good if you're not careful. And uh, sometimes then I'll squeeze the filter just to make sure it comes out around the head of the bolt. Um, you know, I usually very seldom do I ever take the little uh, bleeder uh, screw out of that, uh, out of the filter there to bleed it. So, um, and it, you know, works for me. It, it seems to be a little quicker than, than screwing around with that little 
bolt, that little bleeder screw, and then I don't have to worry about the little bleeder screw uh, leaking if you know if you don't get it get it tight enough or whatever. All right, here, uh, two in the back, I, you know, I just, this is a, a belted blower motor, so I always like to check the condition of the belt and uh, oil the motor and, uh, and that and check the air filters. So that was, uh, you know, that's a pretty simple procedure as, as well. That pretty much takes care of cleaning. I did do a combustion test on it, but I had to shut the camera off because I used my, my uh, iPhone to make the video and I also use the iPhone to do the combustion efficiency test so it, it did test out uh, pretty well about 84 and a half percent for no Williamson furnace that's pretty good so if you made it this far hey thanks for watching uh, hit the subscribe button the like button and leave your comments down below have a great day